Hi guys, I just wanted to show you how to view your data after you run. Um, so here you can see this run has completed. All of the status circles have turned green, so that means it's done. Um, if you go to your report view tab, then you can open the quantitation report. Um, I like to use this one because it integrates your peaks based on retention times. Um, it turns them blue, so it's a lot easier to see. So when you pull um, like your check standard up, you'll see each of these peaks um, is blue, which means that it matches the retention time uh, in your method. So it, it recognizes that, that compound as that. Um, so it's nice to be able to see that. If, if, one, if the retention time was off on one of the compounds, it would actually be white. So then you, could, um, then you would know to go in and adjust your retention time. So I like to use this quantitation report view. So we look through each of our data sets. Um, yeah, our check standard should have 11 compounds plus our three, well, our one internal standard and two surrogates. Um, so you can kind of count and make sure they're all there. And then I like to look at the, um, quanti the quantities as well. So if you look at the concentrations down here, you know, you've got methylene chloride, chloroform, carbon tet, um, and so on. So uh, they should be around 5 ppb. So they're all pretty close. I mean, you might have some outliers, but that could also just be an integration issue. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it as long as they're being recognized. Um, one thing you do want to look at, well, you definitely want to double check your surrogates um, are within that range. So the range would be 5 ppb plus or minus 1. So these both uh, actually go fit into that um, range as well. So that's good. That means so the software knows to base your other peaks off of these two. Well, they use the internal standard as a reference peak, but we are telling it that whatever. So 473, so this is our fluorobenzene peak right here. So we're telling it that that is five. So it is calculating the two surrogates as references to that, which then determines the concentrations of all of your other compounds. So it's important to make sure these are within range because if they're out of range, um, it can throw off your calibration. Um, and so you would, probably need to just make new internal standard solution to go into your SAM unit on your purge and trap. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to make sure that those stay consistent. Um, also, you want to look at this response factor. So normally we like to see it at least over in the millions range. So here you can see it's at like 72 million. So that's really good. Um, once it starts to drop, if you start seeing it in the, you know, hundred thousands or lower, um, you definitely want to change your solution for those. So that's kind of it for the CCV. So yeah, I just verify that all the 11 compounds are um, identified correctly. Um, you can look at your blank. So your blank will have your internal standard as well as your two surrogates. So um, it, yeah, it's just a good reference in your base. This, in this example, the baseline's really low. Sometimes you'll see the baseline a little higher and that's okay because the software knows to integrate to the baseline. So if your baseline was actually up to here and then that's when your peak comes out, it knows to only calculate what's above the baseline. So it automatically subtracts your baseline. Um, so then we pull up the raw samples so what I look for is that there are only three peaks because we don't want more than that. Um, but if there were, um, we can go through how we would identify that. But so generally, yeah, I'll look at, you know, make sure, see how many peaks there are. Um, and then I will verify again that these surrogate concentrations are five plus or minus one PPB. And then you can kind of just browse through, um, you know, to make sure nothing uh, is quantified over 2 ppb. So 2 ppb is where we like to um, have you notify Orsenko if there was a compound over 2 ppb. So 
you know, if you see a little blip, um, you know, then it's not quite as big of a deal if it's under two, um, unless it's consistent. If you see, you know, it's 1.5 for multiple samples, you know, then that might mean that uh, something's floating in the river that it's low, but it's consistent. So that could also be concerning. So definitely alert us for that as well. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, these are all pretty low. Um, if you ever see like a little, like, oh, I'm not sure what that is, you can actually zoom in on this screen. Um, just highlight, click and drag, and then let go, and then you can zoom into that baseline. So yeah, this is just baseline. Um, even if it's a little hump, that's definitely not a peak. So those you shouldn't be too worried about. Um, to get back to the full size chromatogram, I actually don't know if there is a way, but what I do is I just click onto the next file and then I can click back um, to go back to that default screen. But I don't know if there's actually a, <laughs> a command or, or some way to do it on, a, you know, on the software. So yeah, sometimes I just zoom in and just verify that there aren't any little blips or something that kind of come through. So I'll do that with all of the raw samples here and I will see that everything looks pretty good. This response values are good. Concentrations are good. Nothing there. Same with this one. Oh, this one did fall a little below, but since, you know, it could just be, it didn't get a good injection or something, but um, that's not too bad but we'll just see if it starts to do that consistently, I would change it. But seeing that, that, that that's the only one that's so far, yeah, like that went back to 4.7. So it's probably just a bad um, injection. So looks pretty good on the data side. So the next video, I'll show you how to uh, use your spectra to identify unknown peaks.